came the dawn, time to go. Hey, did you hear that? We're going to England! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh boy, hey Edgar, get your suitcase! Ah! Their destination? Elstree Studios outside London, where Jabba's palace stood empty and waiting for them to land. Hello. You. Hey, did everybody go to lunch? What's going on here? Hey. Hello in TV land. <laughs> they were a bit disoriented at first. Even Salacious B. Crumb, Jabba's right-hand bird. Tim Rose spoke for him. Hey, Edgar. What'd you bring me to a place like this for? Look at all these freaks around here. It's really disgusting. That one over there, I don't even know what it is. Can't tell what's the head and what's the tail. And that Jabba guy. Old Big J, as we call him around here. Well, he's the worst of all. Jabba was certainly the hardest of all to create. George said his first design looked too human. Second try, too snail-like. Number three was just right. Jabba was the largest, most complex puppet ever built for a movie. He was constructed the same way the smaller creatures were. His head and neck had to accommodate two main operators. They would be joined, for most shots, by other puppeteers located elsewhere in Jabba's body. Jabba's eyes and some of his facial muscles were radio controlled by two more operators. Stuart Freeborn headed the team that executed Phil Tippett's designs in England. It took three months to build Jabba, and he cost close to half a million dollars. In the film, Star Wars, uh, there was a scene with Jabba himself. Uh, and um, he was always intended to be this loathsome, large, monstrous creature. But it wasn't possible to incorporate my design of Jabba when we shot the scene with the actors on the set. Uh, so I came up with the idea of shooting the scene with a man, and eventually I would mat in a stop-motion creature over the man. Solo! This is the scene George shot for Star Wars, but decided not to finish. Solo! Right here, Java. I've been waiting for you. Have you not? You didn't think I was going to run, did you? Ah, my boy. There are times you disappoint me. Why haven't you paid me? And why did you have to fry poor Greedo like that? After all, we've been through together. Look, Java, next time you want to talk to me, come see me yourself. Don't send one of these twerps. Han. Han. Understand, I just can't afford to make exceptions. When we came to uh, Jedi, I was able to redesign the monster, start from scratch. Uh, in the first film, it, the, the fact that he was walking and certain things you know, demanded a certain type of creature. Uh, this way I was able to have more freedom in creating the creature and uh, make him an even more interesting character than he would, had originally been designed in the first film. Jabba needed a lot of help getting around. Finished, he weighed over 2,000 pounds. He also needed help getting himself, not to mention his act, together. Here's a working drawing of Jabba, showing where his heart and soul, his operators, were located. I operate Jabba's right arm and the jaw of his mouth. And I do the, the voice at the moment to uh, make the lip sync. And uh, between Toby and myself, we do the body movements, the rocking of the the whole figure and yeah well, I'm, the, I'm the silent brain hemisphere I either do the left hand and the tongue and uh, that goes in here and my right hand is free inside the head and uh, basically works this head control tipping it left and right front and back and up and down I have one other control that can swivel the head revolve it and um, for certain shots I have things like the tongue here my hand goes I have a couple of cable controls that do snarls around the mouth and um, 
using my feet and the weight of my body, I, I share with David the job of actually moving the body about. These uh, hand controls here, these two, operate the twitches around the corners of the mouth, middle of the mouth, lower jaw, and also the nostrils. And my feet work the bellows, which in turn works the respiratory system of the beast, the lungs. The smoke from this cigar is for Jabber. When he smokes his pipe, I blow it up the tube and it trickles out of the corner of his mouth. If I was drinking port, it would be a perfect job. Now, this is the middle part of the tail, and this little bit is the little end piece, which the way I move it depends on the mood he's in at the time. If he's in a, a, a bit of an irritable mood, I just do the little flips like you'd bang your fingers if you was losing your temper or impatient. Or if he's really losing his temper, give it a good old thrash on like that, or backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And if he's in a lazy mood, you just keep it like that, nice, steady movement. Well, I tell you, Java's getting very good. Is he? <laughs> yes, he's getting very good. Uh, he's almost star now. Oh, good. We have to be very nice to him. <laughs> I like his I mean, tattoo. He, he is what he is. That's the thing. He doesn't pretend to be anything else. He doesn't feel the need to be charming or anything. He's just an unpretentious, very straightforward guy. Can you munch your lips again, Dave? <laughs> oh, Lovely. Remember the Star Wars Cantina? Everyone loved it, except George.